But my dad really, uh, really he's a, he's a quiet man, you know, and uh, he appreciates the silence. And whenever I speak to him in English, he always returns the foreign favor. See, for him, speaking Japanese is like a walk in the park. I imagine speaking English is like climbing a barbed wire fence. See, my father is a chef. He'll add extra syllables to his sentences like seasoning, something that'll taste better in his mouth. If I ever complain about hunger, he'll tell me to go get the cheese burger at McDonald's. <laughs> my father's accent can be an asshole because my father's accent ain't smooth like my birth certificate. It's the rough edges around my family's grave. It's the crease that creates the wings on a paper crane. You see, my father's accent is a hole in a Japanese internment camp fence. It's an escape route to his culture. His accent is thick, and his words stick together like the vinegar rice on his working hands. He spent more time cooking for people than working on his speech because he knew standard English wasn't going to feed his children. The recipe is his way of talking to Americans. It's how people understand what his heart is trying to say. You see, the accent, the accent is the mark of an immigrant. It's a ruler with mile-long increments that measures the distance away from home. See, maybe Asians are known to be good at math because that's the only homework our parents could help us with. Or maybe I'm just being defensive because I'm afraid that my rusty Japanese is a broken chain link that can't hold my lineage together. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of passing down my lack of language to my children and their grandpa's accent will sound more foreigner than family. I am selfish, writing poems and poems and poems about Japan when my name is the only word I know how to write in Japanese.